getting ready. Yeah, go ahead and get ready and give a few people a chance to get on. Wait, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to them. I'm on I'm on Facebook. My bride's saying, Oh, you talking to me? <laughs> come in, come and show come and show <clears throat> So what's up? Let's see if things in tune or not. So good evening, y'all. Ivy Jr. here. Uh, just God put a few things in my heart, and um, I'm going to kind of share this with you tonight. So begin naming the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, Lord God, we just thank you for everything that you are, everything that you do, everything that you bring, everything that you take away. Pray, Lord God, first that in thanksgiving for all the things you've done for me and my family, that just give you thanks and glory and praise, Lord God, for that, for giving me everything I need every day so that I can continue to be your witness. And I pray for all that you will give me everything I need here tonight, every word, every sound, every note, every everything, Lord God, so that everything I do here right now gives you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So the last couple of days, uh, God just put in my heart is just uh, things about His forgiveness, about His mercy, and about how even when when we do things, I'm using the term stupid things because I've done a lot of stupid things in my life. Even though we do, even though we do stupid things sometimes, they, they, it is crazy stuff that is never too far away from Him to come back. And he continues to call me back and, and, you know, I'll fall several times a minute sometimes, much less in the day. But I know that my Redeemer lives and I know that he died for me. And I know that he shed his blood to cleanse me from my sinfulness and he cleansed me from the, just the, the things I do to, that sometimes keep me on the ground. Which is like when he had Peter walking on water and Peter started to, to look away and he started to sink. And Jesus was like, keep your eyes on me. When we look away is when we sink. When we look away is when we fall. And Lord God, I just thank you that, that you're so merciful that even when we commit terrible sinful acts, Lord God, that you're still there still loving us, still holding out your hand, saying, return to me. That even though that, that there's things that we do that, that bring us into the pit, that you're always there with your hands extended to us, ready to pull us out. Amen and amen. So God gave me this song uh, several years ago, the series of 2007, actually. <clears throat> it's called I Give It All to You. <clears throat> and it's about his repentance, not his repentance, about, not his repentance, but his willingness to show us mercy, to give us grace, that when we come to him repentant, that he will give us that forgiveness, that he will give us that mercy, he will give us that grace, and welcome us back home. Glory to God. I can hear your voice. Are you calling me? so very far away pain that is so real sentiness I feel 
Jesus, hear me say A feeling unforgiven A pain that is so real Jesus, rescue me The chains of sin that bind me Are loosed by your command Give it all to you, Jesus. I turned away. I would not let you in. Thought that you would never find me here. Hiding in my sin, you called to me again. Jesus, rescue me. I need to be forgiven, released from all my sin. Jesus, rescue me. All the chains of sin that bound me are loosed by your command. Give it all to you, Jesus. Cleanse from all my sin, forgiven once again. Redeemed though I was very far away. Your blood has covered me Was blind but now I see And now praising you I say Now I have been forgiven Released from all my sin Jesus rescued me And all the chains of sin that bound me Removed by your command gave it all to you Lord I have been forgiven released from all my sin my Jesus rescued me and all the chains of sin that bound me removed by your command gave it all to you Jesus Gave it all to you. Jesus. Lord God, I just thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for the wages you keep on letting me back in, Father God, that when I fall, you keep picking me up out of the ditch and put me back on the road to you. Lord, you show me that no matter what it is, no matter how far I run, that you will always welcome me home, that you will always just waste me with open arms. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. I want to share a couple of things with you. Um, hopefully not going to be long-winded, but you know how I am. It doesn't always work that way. <laughs> but, um, you know, just, just God put us on my heart to, to come here, and somebody needs to hear this tonight. Somebody needs to hear this. You know, um, that maybe you're stuck in something. Maybe you got involved in something <clears throat> that you knew you shouldn't be involved in. But it just looked too good. It just felt too good. Just whatever, you know, just that whatever it is you might have fallen into, you're not too far gone to let it go. God's telling you right now through the voice of this guy right here that he loves you so much. He's willing to meet you wherever you are, wherever you are. Whether, whether you fall into to drugs or you fall into to, to over drinking and some kind of alcohol addiction or you fall into some sort of extramarital relationship you shouldn't be involved in or just name the sin, whatever it is that you're into right now that has you bound, that has you drugged down and in the pit, God's here to tell you right here tonight, 
through my voice that he loves you and he'll meet you where you are. He won't leave you there, but he'll meet you right there. I don't care how far the ditch you are, how far you, you cover with the mud, the blood, and the beer, that he'll meet you where you are. That he loves you enough to meet you right there. But Ivy, you don't have any idea the things I've done, the things I'm into, the things I'm involved in now that I could never get out of. That's a lie. It's a lie from the pits of hell. Because that's how the enemy traps you. That's how the enemy traps you. That's how he trapped me. Many, many years ago, when I was in, in a road man, man, you can't imagine when you're an entertainer, you might be able to imagine if you're in, if you're in it or if you are an entertainer, but if not, you, you can't imagine when you're an entertainer, uh, the things people think about you. You know, the, 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 the work that we did as, as a band, um, we went to clubs and we did parties and you name it, the regular band stuff, you know, and I made the mistake of listening to, um, was it Bobby? I think it was Bobby Brown. Was it Bobby Brown hit a song, um, My Prerogative? Is that right? My Bride Over Here? Yes. Bobby Brown, he, he once said, he says, the way to be successful in music, he says, is that, you know, when, when you're talking about it, if you're like the, 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 a, a singer or whatever, you know, is to appear to be available but never be. So I'm like, man, it sounds like a, you know, at the time, you know, man, that, 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 that's pretty cool, you know. Uh, you know, that, that way you, you, you can attract more fans, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you, it led me on a road to hell. Because what happens is that, that you portray that as an entertainer, you know, and even though you're a happily married person, that the people that come to see you, you portray something, even though you're not physically doing that, you portray it and they believe it. The next thing you know, there's people coming to you saying, hey, so-and-so said that, that, they, that they've been... Uh, being with you, you know, you, you, like, no, wait, what? And I realized that I put myself in that position. And even though nothing was physically happening, the fact that that part, that part was being portrayed on stage made it kind of hard to walk out of. And then, not getting a lot of details, but in, in a, a big rally we were doing, you know, just, just one particular time. And I'm not going to give the enemy glory by telling you exactly what was going on. But there were things happening on our stage that I should not have been involved in. And while I was not involved in the action, the action... I was still providing the environment for that to take place. And when God reviews me that moment, and I never forget as long as I live, it's like, it was like a burning thing in my mind. You know, he, he says, like in the middle of these things going on, you know, what came to me is, what happens if Jesus comes back right now? And I was like, I'm doomed. If that happens right now, if today is judgment day, my judgment's not going to be good. And God started revealing to me through other people, places, and things that I was using my gifts that he gave me for something completely against what he wanted me to use them for. And he started putting people, places, and things in my life that showed me that. And I think probably one of the biggest things that, that, that really threw me into a tailspin was that on a gig one night, 
We was playing a, 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 a club that we had a great fan base in. <clears throat> and during a break, a good friend of mine and my wife's came up to me and said, hey, we was talking a minute ago, and we were saying, man, how cool is it that Ivy could be all crazy like this you know, on Fridays and Saturdays and, and getting all crazy with the crowd and getting people wound up and making them do things and all and then go play for the Lord on Sunday. I was like, oh, I like, like, a, poof, like a knife in the heart. And the Lord hit me with that, that thought and I'm like, I'm the hypocrite. I'm the guy that I preach against. So there's just other parts of it. We, we don't have enough time for everything. But God put it in my path to know that I was not using the gifts he gave me for what he gave them to me for. And that instead of leading people to him, that the things I was doing, even though I claimed I'm not the guy doing those things, but what he showed me was I was the guy leading people to hell. And that, that stung really, really bad. It didn't just sting, it hurt really bad. And so I, 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 had to, I had to make a decision to get away from that. And thank you, Jesus, for rescuing me from that. Thank you, Lord. Because he is merciful and he is kind. But he is also just. And the good news is that that two by four across the forehead moment came at a point in time to where things would happen in my life that, that I was like, it either had to, I, I was either coming off, I was either jumping off the cliff or make a decision to be saved. So thank you, Lord, for rescuing me and giving me an opportunity to be saved. Why am I telling you all this? Because somebody has to hear this tonight. Because somebody has to understand that no matter what you've done, you can always come back home. That the Lord loves you. He wants you to come back home. He has his arms open wide. Come back home. Come to me. You have not ever gone too far until you're dead to come back home. But you know and I know very well that our life could be ended like that. I was almost killed in a traffic accident many years ago. And thank you, Lord God, for rescuing me from that. But I'm telling you, because of that, that situation and other things that has happened in my life, that your life could be ended in a second, in a millisecond. It's done. Don't wait for that. Come back home. Turn to God, turn to the Lord, and allow him to bring you back home. He loves you. He will not forsake you. But I've you know the stuff I'm in, too. You know, I've, I've done things that, that <clears throat> you know, I've, I've been involved in, in drugs. I've been involved in alcoholism. I've been involved in <clears throat> extramarital affairs. Well, I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Nothing you've done. Nothing you've done can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing. You may take yourself away from him, but he still loves you. How can you say that? I, you don't know if he loves me or not. I, I've done too bad of things. He, he can't forgive me. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Have you killed someone yet? Maybe so. Okay. Can you be forgiven for that? Absolutely. You may still have to pay a penalty for it. But God can and will forgive you no matter what you've done. If you repent. If you're truly repentant in your heart and bring it to him and lay it at the foot of the cross of Jesus, he will forgive you. But I can't forgive myself. It doesn't matter. 
Because God's forgiveness of you does not have anything to do with you forgiving yourself. He is not bound by that. Now, you forgiving yourself or not is going to determine how you proceed with things. But that doesn't stop God from forgiving you if you are truly repentant in your heart. Simon Peter was told by Jesus before he was taken to the cross, you will deny me three times before the cock rose. Peter's like, oh, no, 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 never. But guess what? Three times. Three times he denied Jesus. Denied the Savior of the world at the time when he needed him the most. Peter just knew he was doomed. He just knew it. But what happened? When Jesus was resurrected, and the disciples were in the boat fishing, they looked on the, on the shore, and who did they see? They, they can't recognize who it is, but Peter recognized him. He says, it's the Lord. Peter jumps out of the boat and runs to the shore to meet Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, I'm going to read this to you. This is in John 21, 15 through 17. When they, when they get to the shore, Peter asks, I'm sorry, Jesus asks Peter, hey, you got something to eat? And Peter must be kind of confused, but he's like, okay, let's get some fish. So they, they cook some fish, and Jesus starts to eat. And then Peter's like, can you, can you imagine what's going through his head right now? Okay, now he didn't say it, but he's probably thinking, Lord, I denied you three times. What now? So this is what happened. This is John 21, 15 through 17. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He, Peter, said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Jesus said to Peter, feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He, Jesus, said to him, tend my sheep. He, Jesus, said to him, Peter. The third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Jesus didn't even put it in his face that he lied about even knowing him. He never even asked him about it. He, never said, he just gave him three chances to make up, to be forgiven for his three offenses. And scripture doesn't even say Anywheres that Jesus confronted Peter about his lying. But it does tell us that he forgave him. Gave him three opportunities to fix the three offenses. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm gonna be kind of I'm gonna be kind of short here. Uh, I know I'm never short, but I'm gonna try. Uh, no matter who you are. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're into right now. And when I say it don't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't freaking matter. Listen to the ball guy talking. It doesn't matter what you're into or what you've done. He can and will forgive you if you come to him with a repentant heart. Amen. Boom. Put a period on it. How do you clean it up? Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Just like the Israelites did at the Exodus. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. They covered themselves with the blood of a lamb. You, my brothers and sisters, had the blood of the lamb to cover yourself with. Not a lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. So Lord God, no matter what I've done, I repent, Lord God. I give you everything I am, and I'm sorry for anything I've done against you. Whatever it is, name me a sin. I don't care. 
Don't name it on the, on the, <laughs> on the comments. Just name it in your head. Name it in your, in your heart. Lord God, I've done whatever. I am so sorry I've offended you. Lord God, please forgive me. I give you myself. I give you my word that I'm repentant of this sin, of these sins. Whatever, you, you follow what I'm saying? And Lord God, cover me, cover my life with the blood of Jesus Christ. When I keep doing this, like the, 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 the lentils and doorposts back in Egypt. Cover me with the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb that's cleansed me from my sin. Because the enemy cannot penetrate the blood. He cannot penetrate the blood. Amen. Hard stop. Put a period on it. Put an exclamation point on it. He cannot penetrate the blood. Glory to God. I, I could be in here for days. You know I can. But I'll leave you with this. Uh, you know, Bishop Sam Jacobs, uh, he did a lot of work with Bishop Sam in, in the, the years past. You know, when we do events and stuff like that, Bishop Sam would always do altar calls. Uh, and, you know, it's like if, I'm trying to remember how you do it. Like if you never, ever, 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 ever invited Jesus into your heart, come up, we're going to do it now. That's not exact words you would say, but, but you follow what I'm saying. So I'm going to help you do that right now. No matter what you're into, no matter what you're doing or have done, he can and will forgive you if you come to him with a repentant heart. Amen and amen. Yeah. Romans 10, 9 through 11. Romans 10, 9 through 11. I'm going to read it to you. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Boom. Hard stop, period. Read it again. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This isn't just lip service. You have to believe this. You have to have faith in this. Glory to God. For it is believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. I'll read the whole thing again, end to end. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Not a whole lot to add to that. No, he loves you. No, he gives you the opportunity to come home. No, again, whatever you've done, whatever you're doing, whatever you're into, was into, whatever, he will forgive you when you come to him with a truly repentant heart. Amen and amen. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Lord, even if I don't know what I've done, I may be reaping a harvest. You know, I say this all the time to my kids and my family and, and what have you. Uh, you know, they kind of get crazy sometimes. They get sick of hearing it, but I don't care. That we reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. Sow good seeds. If you sow bad seeds, you're going to reap a bad harvest. Think of your life. What is your life looking like right now? What have you sown to reap that harvest? What's somebody else's fault? Maybe, maybe so, maybe not. But I would venture to say, and I'm telling you this from experience, that more than likely, the things happening to you in your life right now are probably a result of seeds sown. Not saying that sometimes other people have um, access, maybe, or maybe I'm not looking for, but sometimes other people, uh, things that they do uh, play a part, okay? But if you sow the proper seeds, 
You sow the wheat and not the weeds. You will reap wheat. I'm telling you this because I know it for a fact. Because I've sown those bad seeds. I've reaped the bad harvest. And I'm here to tell you, when you sow good seeds, you will reap a good harvest. God, I could be here for days. You know I can. But Lord, I just thank you right now for, for giving me this opportunity to come here and share your love and share your words. Um, so I'm going to do two things real quick here. Um, this song that the Lord gave me back in 2007, I want to do the last verse. I'm going to do another one he gave me real quick to end the evening. Amen? Amen. I have been forgiven, released from all my sin. Lord Jesus, rescue me. <coughs> all the chains. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm coughing. Hang on a second. <coughs> Let's try this again. I have been forgiven. Least from all my sin. Jesus rescued me. All the chains of sin that bound me, removed by your command. I gave it all to you, Jesus. I gave it all to you. Jesus. I am washed by the blood, I am saved by the blood, I am healed by the blood, my Lord Jesus. I am washed by the blood, I am saved by the blood, I am healed by the blood, my Lord Jesus. I am washed by the blood, I am saved by the blood, I am healed by the blood, my Lord Jesus. I am washed by the blood, I am saved by the blood, I am healed by the blood, my Lord Jesus. And you and me cannot defeat my Savior's blood, cause I'm a child of the great I am, and I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. A little piece of that one. Just thank you, Lord God, for all that you are and all that you're doing. Remember, there's nothing you've done. You're not too far. You're never too far. I don't care what you've done, what you're doing, what you're into, what you was into. Turn to him. He will bring you home. Turn to him, he will bring you home. Doesn't matter. Be repentant. Show him your repentant heart. Come to him, he will bring you back with open arms, loving you in ways you never thought possible. Go to your family. Love your family. Love your husbands. Love your wives. Love your children, your grandchildren, your aunts, your uncles. You don't have to put out the things that you happen on social media. Because Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they're not going to solve your problems. The one person will. Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He's the one. You want to send something up? Send it up. You don't have to send it out on social media. The fastest way to send it out, to send it up, is to begin in Jesus' name and let it go. Let it rip. Okay, y'all, I'm saying it again. I could be here all night. I love you. Peace in Christ. I pray that this coming Lent is fruitful for you, for your family. Share this to someone who needs it because someone needs to hear this tonight right now. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Peace in Christ, y'all. Bye.